And uh, I am recording this starting now. And for those of you who have been asking, I did put the recorded webinars from the last few uh, on YouTube today as well. So you can go back and watch those if you would like. All right, moving on. Um, and again, referees, unmute yourself and chime in uh, throughout the call as, as long as you'd like. Oops. Okay. Our agenda today, first we're just going to go over a little bit on tackles, and we'll do some video analysis, and we'll have some question and answer at the end. Um, I may get in and out of full screen every once in a while. That's because I'm unmuting people as they join, so just bear with. Um, today we're going to do a little bit different. I've been embedding the videos in the webinar, and uh, I decided with this one not to do that because when we go through instructional stuff, we're going to be looking at some uh, materials from the FIFA Futuro courses. And as we learned last time, for some reason, my laptop and PowerPoint didn't enjoy FIFA materials. So I'm going to go into a different video player for that. We'll look through and discuss all those. And then I'm just going to go to YouTube as well uh, and play the videos as, uh, as different referees lead us through them. So I'll be moving in and out of full screen. So I apologize for that as well. So obviously with tackles, we have two things. Is there a decision or is there a foul? And then is there misconduct? Uh, as I said a few minutes ago, we're going to assume for the most part these are all fouls and move on to what do we need to be thinking about for potential misconduct. As we've been doing, we're going to couch everything that we do in the FIFA considerations. So the things that we need to be looking at first and foremost uh, at the beginning and there's a little bit out of order <coughs> because the considerations under fouls, uh, careless, reckless, excessive force are not in any particular order. So I've organized them um, into some thought centers, basically. So the first is, number one, does the player show a lack of attention or consideration when making this challenge? That's something that we just need to think about when the when the tackle is taking place. Is the player committing the tackle showing a lack of attention or consideration for where his opponent is or what outcomes there may be for the opponent when making the challenge. Uh, number two, does the player act without precaution when making the challenge? Um, that helps us decide if something's reckless or not, obviously. But we need to be thinking about the fact that players have a responsibility to their opponents and to themselves when they start committing tackles in the game. And... Um, if they put themselves in positions where they're going to potentially do harm or um, you know, commit a challenge that is considered reckless, that's their responsibility not to do that. So we need to be thinking about that uh, when we're watching challenges. And then number seven is the challenge putting an opponent in a dangerous situation. So I hope you all have these considerations uh, either printed out or on quick uh, review because as we go through the video clips, we're going to be looking at these and, and asking these questions to help us with the decision-making process. Next set of considerations, number three, does the player make fair or unfair contact with the opponent after touching the ball? Um, for referees a little bit lower in the elite referee program, this is an important consideration to make, and we'll see some videos, examples of this. Getting the ball by itself does not excuse a player from anything else that may happen after that. So getting the ball and then wrecking a player is not acceptable. A player is responsible for their actions even after they touch the ball, and we'll see some videos where the ball is won, but what happens after that is just completely unacceptable, and there are some consequences to pay for it. And then number 19 is the player challenging for the ball at the moment the contact is being made. It's another important consideration. Obviously, if we have a red card, it's the difference between violent conduct or serious foul play. But you can also get a sense of the intent of the player uh, and their actions if the ball is in playing distance. So if they're making a legitimate attempt to play the ball, that needs to factor into decisions for misconduct. <clears throat> Does the player far exceed the necessary force when making the challenge? That's a factor, obviously, for serious foul play. Uh, what degree of speed or intensity is the player using when making the challenge? And does the player lunge at the opponent from the front, from the side, or from behind? These are all, again, dissecting the nature of the challenge. How hard is the challenge? How fast is the challenge? What is the speed of the opponent when they're making the challenge? All those things factor into whether or not a player is in complete control of their body or not. And obviously, if they're not in control of their body, they're more of a harm to or potential harm to a, another player on the field. So we need to be thinking about these things. Which part of the body has the player used to make contact? Again, this is where we start talking about hard surfaces versus soft surfaces. 
is the the offending player making contact with their calf onto the other player, or is it the bottom of their shoe? Um, you know, the calf is very soft, the bottom of the shoe is very hard, so one of those is going to do more damage than the other. Those are things we need to be thinking about uh, when when deciding on misconduct. On which player of the uh, which part of the opponent's body is contact made? Is it to a soft part of the body, the Achilles, the back of the leg, or is it to a hard surface? Again, on top of the shoe. If a player stomps on the the top of a foot, is that going to be doing as much damage uh, as maybe a, a stomp on the back of the ankle or on the calf? So those are things we need to think about. And does the player use his studs when making a tackle? Um, there's one that I left off here, or maybe it's on the next one. But you know, what position are the player's feet when they're making a challenge? Are they coming in with their studs exposed, or are the cleats downward and the foot is on the ground? Those are all things we need to analyze when we're watching challenges because it informs the decisions we're going to be making. Does the player use brutality against an opponent when challenging? And is the challenge clearly endangering the safety of the opponent? These are obviously getting more into the red card realm. Uh, is there violent conduct? Is it just, a, you know, as, the, as the consideration says, is it just a completely brutal tackle? In which case, we need to elevate our, our response to it. And is there no doubt that they're, that the tackle is endangering the safety of the opponent? <coughs> These are all factors that we need to be thinking about. And there are additional ones if you look at the, uh, at the considerations. Most of those are for deciding if there are fouls or not. The ones that I've highlighted here are specific to determining if there is misconduct. Um, but these are all things we need to be thinking about while we're watching a challenge. And as we look through some of the training videos, we'll analyze what are some of the, the factors in the player's body position, their speed, all those things that help you process this. Are there any questions on any of that before we move on to look at some video examples? Please chime in with any questions. All right, give me just a second so I can unmute a couple of people who joined us late, and then we'll look at some of the FIFA material materials. For those of you that have been on a lot of these, you know that I pull mostly uh, USL clips because those are the games that we all have access to. But the Futuro clips themselves are actually really good as training because it allows us to to get really, really close up uh, replays of, of various tackles and we can get a sense of, of what these look at and why. So I'm going to go through, you can see on the screen here, a, a number of different videos. I may not show all of them so that we get a sense of what careless is, reckless, and then some serious foul play. Um, but we'll play these, we'll pause briefly, we'll review why they are what they are, and then we'll move on. To the penalty area. Pickett gets back from Tackbells. Pickett. So you can see here the player makes an attempt with the left foot to block the ball. And the right foot stays on the ground, trips the player. That's just a careless tackle here. If you look, the point of contact is generally the leg, but actually the white player who will be called for this foul doesn't actually create a lot of contact with the player. The player trying to go past creates the contact. It's a simple trip. So the white player hasn't gone through this player as part of the challenge. They've just left their body there and committed the foul. So that's why we would consider this reckless. Again, we'll have one more watch. Now with Cole, who's Apparently not. Nice second here, this video player is kind of a pain to work with. One more look at that one. To the penalty area. Pickett gets back from Tagbells. Pickett, and the referee. Again, puts the foot down. Leg, top of foot makes contact as the player tries to go by. Not a lot in that one, so just a careless foul. Saying to Another example. Now with Cole, who's out of a... Again, much the same thing. Puts a leg out to try to block the ball as it goes past. Puts the foot down to the ground. Player trips over the leg. So this is something that we need to be looking for. Where does the foot go? Foot goes down to the ground, not into the player. The green player hasn't thrown their body into the opponent. They've just held their ground. Simple trip, nothing more. <laughs> so 
Same thing here. Player through the back this time. But again, you'll notice a constant theme here. Foot on the ground. The point of contact is a thigh to a hamstring. No serious damage to be done there. Foot is on the ground is the key thing. Simple foul. Nothing reckless about that. And again, hasn't really gone through the player. Definitely creates contact, but there's no speed. There's no force. There's really not much of anything in that but a basic foul. So when you go through the considerations, there's not any uh, a lack of precaution. There's not any concern over the well-being of this player who's offended here. So uh, basic foul. <laughs> And again, highlighting foot on the ground. This is a very consistent theme for careless fouls, is the feet are on the ground. They've not left their feet in any way. They've not put their feet into the opponent in any way. They've kept their feet on the ground, and they've tripped an opponent most often. Simple foul. Last careless one here, I believe. So again, across the body of the player, foot on the ground. Now this one looks a little bit messier, but that's because of the speed of the attacking player in this situation. And again, hasn't gone into the player with the body, foot on the ground, has not created a dangerous situation here. Just missed times, a normally basic challenge. And it's important to note the reaction of the players on the field for, uh, in all of these situations. Nobody on the field really overreacted to these fouls that, that occurred. And again, this is something we can take into consideration in how we respond. If the players react and we have something we need to manage here, so maybe we need to think about what we saw. But if nobody really reacts to much of anything, that needs to be a signal to us. So now we'll look at some reckless challenges. So you can see here the player's left her foot, left her feet, excuse me. Has made a challenge with the leg locked, foot out, but across the body, doesn't make contact. And really what's reckless here is the left leg following through into the opponent. This is a factor you'll see a lot with reckless challenges, is a trail leg, not scissoring through, but the player coming through with enough force that the trail leg, still tucked back, makes contact with the opponent, as you see here. Second. Skate. Watch as the player comes through, the trail leg is actually the one that makes the brunt of the contact with the player. Just play the cross. The so as the trail left leg comes through, it's actually the one that makes the contact with the planted leg. And again, some factors to think about. Can't stand this video player. As the player comes in for the challenge, is the ball stationary? Is it easy to identify where the ball is going to be? When she leaves their feet here, this player is in a pretty exposed position. There's very little chance that this player is actually going to win this ball in a safe way, given what the player is doing here. So. Definitely a reckless challenge. Comes through the back of her. But again, when we look at the slow replay, mode of contact is important. Foot is down. Studs are not exposed. Scissor tackle doesn't come through. Just goes to ground. Back of the, of the or excuse me, the thigh comes through the back of the leg. It's a reckless challenge. Studs are down, 
no problems there. Next example. Okay, not punished on that occasion. Here's Luisa Delgado, one on target, but. Uh... So this is where we start to see how the feet get involved. And I want to pay close attention here because the mode of contact you'll see consistently with some cautionable offenses and some sending off offenses, but we need to look at where the contact takes place. So you'll see here, steps on her foot with her toes. <clears throat> Not a lot of force in it otherwise, but that is something we need to be paying attention to. So you can see there's not a lot of speed in it, not a lot of force. Okay, not punished on that occasion. Here's Luisa Delgado, one on target, but... Uh... But steps on the foot. So the key important thing here is the bottom of the foot has stepped onto the top of the foot. The top of the foot is a hard surface. It's not a soft surface. It's not a dangerous surface. It hurts but it's not the kind of injury that's going to put a player out of the game. If this stomp happens on the back of the ankle, in this area, on the planted foot, we have a different story, and we'll see some examples of that. But here, foot stomps on the top of the foot, a hard surface, that gives us a reckless challenge. Same thing here. Lunging for the ball, mistimes it, steps on the foot. And again, it's important to note, studs are being used, which bumps us up into the reckless category, but where on the opponent the contact is made is still just on the top of the foot. So that's something that we're going to consider reckless. And again, look at the amount of speed that comes. The player doesn't go through the challenge. He's trying to block the ball, steps on the foot. You can see here, realizes it, tries to lunge for the ball. Not a lot of force, not moving with speed. Just steps on the foot. Definitely hurts, doesn't feel good. Portuguese player makes a meal of it. Player goes in the book. Much the same here. That's the moment of truth right there. Studs on top of the foot. So anytime you see studs on top of the foot where a player is going to make a challenge for the ball, very, very likely that's a reckless challenge. And you'll see some of these in tackles when we look at, at some examples from USL clips. Questions on this? Did somebody just unmute themselves? <coughs> So again, the thing to be thinking about here is where on the body the contact is made. Last one, reckless. We really are looking for somebody to make a mistake. I think in this game, that would be yellow. So again with this, we have a tackle here, and you'll see it's the trail leg that makes the bulk of the contact. We really are looking for somebody to make a mistake out of this game. That would be yellow. This leg here is what comes through the player. Watch that one more time. I'll pause it at the right time. We really are looking for somebody to make a mistake out of this game. That would be yellow. Goes through the front. The lead leg does actually not make the contact, actually gets the ball, but it's the trail leg that comes through the player. Comes through with a bit of force, with a bit of speed, and definitely is a reckless manner for this challenge, so we need to go with the yellow card here. Now a couple of serious foul play. Again, think about where on the body the contact is made. Now we've moved from the foot to the ankle. 
and you'll see here that's the kind of tackle that can end a player's career. Player's fortunate not to have broken her ankle here. But you can see the foot is not on top of the foot. It's definitely on the ankle. It's folded over the leg. Can do a lot of damage here. at it one more time look at the speed and the point of contact punch him a long distance and that right there is the moment of truth so as we've talked about in the past with positioning Referee has an inside position here. That's hard to see. Referee's in a good position here, best possible position to see that. But that's why we want you out along this plane. Because if you're more towards the center of the field, you don't have a chance of seeing this because you're going to have bodies blocking you. So getting out in these moments to the area here, even with this line, is crucial to be able to see this challenge. Unfortunately, the referee turns her head away. But that needs to be ascending off. Again, this is a lunging challenge, so it's one of the things that we talked about before. Lunges we have to be very careful with. Now, not a lot of force in that, so we're going to have to pay close attention to where the contact is made. Again, studs are used, but instead of on the top of the foot, now we're talking about the Achilles. This happens right, you press the Achilles, player has a hard time coming back from that. And it's a quick, it looks like a somewhat simple foul, so we have to be paying attention to these. I'm going to play that one one more time so you can see it in full speed. It doesn't look like a lot to it. So you have to pay close attention to where the point of contact is made. So we need to send the player off for this. Important distinction with this one. This is definitely a red card, but this is actually violent conduct. Watch it one more time in real time. The reason for violent conduct is the player trying to play the ball right now. The ball's no. over here, and a solid yard, yard and a half away, she kicks as hard as she can through the ankle of the player. This is violent conduct. This isn't player's not trying to, uh, to make a play on the ball here. And so if a player commits an action like this that's not in the attempt of playing the ball, then we have violent conduct. The player needs to be sent off. <clears throat> any questions on any of the videos that we just watched? These are all Futuro materials from FIFA. Can we see the one before this again? The one with the step on the Achilles? The Achilles, yeah. So you can see here, referee has turned her head and started to run away. So in this one, they want serious foul play, but in the other, violent conduct. That's correct. 
Is it just because it's stepping on versus like because kicking at the player? Trip basically. Uh, okay. The way it's done. Yeah. Versus I can see that. a violent action, kicking, punching, right. things like that. It's just a trip. Okay. Just. Yep. Perfect. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to go back and replay this one one more time. This is where we always have to be paying attention. We never want to turn and run away from play with our back to it. Mind you, look at the score and the minute. Game's over here. Zimbabwe players are frustrated. Here the referee turns, looks away. At the moment this player gets stepped on, she's not looking at play. Right there is when it happens. Referee's not looking. That can't happen. Turns back, sees her trip, has no idea what happened. Any more questions on any of that before we go and look at some USL clips? Okay, then as we've done before, we'll have some volunteers. We've got nine clips to look at. Nine different people to step up and analyze clips. Who's our first uh, volunteer? Don't oh, make me choose, people. Come on. I'll go. It's Isai. All right, Isai. Here we go. Damn, you have, Jason, but their defense is equally stingy. After the seven goals conceded by the Deltas last week, they are now tops of the league in terms of Watch that one more time. Damn, you have, Jason, but their defense is equally <coughs> stingy. After the seven goals conceded by the Deltas last week, they are now tops of the league in terms of all right, so talk us through that one. Yeah, so um, player loses possession and tries to gain it back, knowing that the ball is now far farther away. And he takes a few steps and lunges in. And the other player, I don't know if he recognized or he didn't have enough time to react, but he luckily keeps his feet and doesn't follow through on the ball or the pass he's trying to make. However, the Delta player does expose his cleats um, with two feet in the air. And from what I saw in the clip, I didn't see him make uh, clear contact um, as he's lunging in. And maybe it was uh, afterwards, uh, once the momentum has been spent, because he does hit the ground, before I think he makes any contact with the player. Um, but just the considerations is he's putting both himself and the player in a dangerous situation. He's exposing his cleats. He does have intensity, but I don't know if he hits the player with his cleat or studs, but more with the side of it. Um, so to me, it's a reckless challenge. Um, there is no nothing like we saw where he was uh, landing on the ankle and bending it. The player also, some of the cues, the white player doesn't fall down. Uh, he kind of just walks away, kind of stepping on his foot, um, checking if it's okay. All right. Anybody want to add anything, disagree with that, different thoughts? Yeah, Matt, can I just jump in for one second here? Yeah, who we got here? Yeah, so uh, this is not necessarily part of the considerations per se, but it's more just the location of where the foul actually occurs on the field. Mm -hmm. And noting the time as well, I mean, six minutes into the game, and it's, this is literally five yards from the touch line in between both of the coaches, all of the benches, and you have one of the coaches actually standing right there. So something to keep in mind for the referee is just, regardless of what you decide on this tackle, you're setting a precedent for every single person on the field because of the location where it happens right front and center there. Absolutely. So does anybody have – so Isai, if I heard you correctly, you've got a yellow card for a reckless challenge here. Anybody disagree with this? Want to see something different? Okay, then working through the considerations, this is definitely a reckless challenge. But as you can see from this still frame, he doesn't actually make contact with the player with the bottom of his studs. 
So he's gone in with two feet. He's definitely, by this picture, fully off the ground, not really in control of his body, but gets lucky in that he doesn't actually make contact with the feet. And so that's the only thing that keeps him from being sent off here. So the correct decision here is a caution for a reckless challenge. And definitely, uh, as was indicated by our second speaker, we need to show some urgency getting over to here. Yellow card and make sure everybody knows that kind of tackle is just not going to happen for the rest of the game. It's a completely unacceptable challenge. Um, so some things to think about for referees and identifying that these things may happen. If you go back and watch this clip, the player loses the ball, but not too far out in front of him, and immediately tries to go back and win it again. Anytime you see defenders in particular take touches too far out in front of them and then go in and try to win the ball, usually momentum that they're carrying forward is never a good thing. So as they move in to try to regain the ball, you need to be aware that the nature of the challenge probably isn't going to be very smart. So if someone loses the ball coming out of the back, and goes in and tries to re-win it, usually it's not going to be a very good thing. So once again, we'll watch it one more time. Loses the ball, comes in to try to win it. Because <clears throat> of where the challenge happens and the nature of the contact, we don't have anything more than that. Uh, just a quick, just to add it, this is uh, Matt Waldron. Um, I mean, what what would you say about like the little afters that the white player who wins the ball and is actually getting the challenge is actually being challenged on? You know, he kind of leaves his knee in a little bit on the afters. Um, I mean, he, I think that would at least be a talking to. Yeah, my sense, you know, you may be looking a little bit into that because here – the thing that's careful to look for is he actually closes his leg around him. The The player who's committed the challenge here has wrapped his leg around this player's foot, and so it's possible he's falling. Either way, unless it's really dramatic, like if he steps up and swings at him or something like that, after this inflammatory of a tackle, if you're doing anything but helping up the player and patting him on the back who took the tackle, you're going to get a lot of crap from, from the team who, who was aggrieved here. Because after this kind of a rash challenge, you don't want to be seen going over and admonishing the player who just took that challenge. That's going to get you in trouble. So if anything after this, there's a little bit of after here. And for those of you who have worked these NASL games before, particularly the Deltas, you know that Mr. Heineman here is a problem. And so this early in the game, if you're going to deal with anything, that's a pretty rash challenge. There's very few people on the field who would think that's not a rash challenge. So if a player comes at you like this and gets in your face about a challenge, deal with that. Because those behaviors, if left unchecked, will go on for a long time. And for those of you, again, who have worked these games, you know that Mr. Heineman is a pain in the ass all the time. And so if we're going to deal with anything in this situation, we want to deal with this player coming at the referee when really we should be going and showing a yellow card. If the referee chooses not to show a yellow card, if we show this clip further, he actually doesn't even go over and talk to the player. That That's something we have to deal with there. Any other questions? All right, who wants to take the second clip? Matt, I can take this one. It's a Lee Heo here. All right, here we go. <clears throat> We'll play through the replay here. It's a long one till we get to the replay. I'm going to skip here. Okay, so um, referee plays advantage as the white team is attacking with some speed into midfield. So I think before we even get to the challenge, a good clue for the referee is uh, the amount of space that's going to be available and the speed of attack could, um, you know, alert you to the likelihood of a challenge like this. Uh, and sure enough, it does happen right on midfield. So um, when the green defender 
enters the challenge, he is making a genuine attempt to play the ball that is mistimed in the end. Uh, he enters with moderate speed. And uh, as we saw in some of the Futuro examples, the contact in the end is with um, the top of the defender's foot onto, uh, sorry, the bottom of the defender's foot onto the top of the attacker's foot. Uh, so I think that this is a reckless challenge, yellow card. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to add anything to that? Disagree with that? Okay, good analysis. So everything Leo just said is accurate. The contact here happens with not a lot of force. Foot comes down, I think it's on the side of the foot, but even side, top, doesn't matter. It's a hard surface. It's not on the ankle itself. <clears throat> Easy caution here for reckless challenge. An additional note in watching this video, based on the advantage discussion we had last time, this is not an advantage. Because if you look here, what do the numerics look like? One, two, three, four, five, six defenders in view with one attacker, maybe two. Maybe there's another one up here, but I can guarantee you there's at least one more, if not two more defenders. So this is not an area where we really want to apply this, particularly with the winning team having taken the foul here. So while I know there's a lot of space, from pro in the assessment, this was a dubious advantage to give, mostly because they don't have the numerical advantage and it would have been an easy game control foul to have called. So take a second, look at how realistic an advantage is, and you'll see at this moment it's not really realistic at all. If anything, they're going to have to work really hard to keep possession. If this guy doesn't beat him here, we probably have a pass back to here, but they're playing into a lot of pressure. So this probably isn't an advantage we want to give. Any thoughts on that? Additional conversation for this clip? <clears throat> okay. Probably save yourself a caution here if you don't play the advantage. Who wants to take the third clip? Come on, volunteer somebody. This is Turan. I'll take it. All right. Thanks, Turan. Here we go. See a replay here in a second. <coughs> As we can see here in this frozen image, players are coming, coming with speed and high intensity. She's lunging with two feet and landing the bottom of her foot to attacker's calf. So hard, hard space to soft space. I mean, as you can see, she's going through the calf and to the Achilles too. She's coming with speed and intensity and straight leg. She gets a little bit off the ball, but since she's acting with complete disregard of the safety of the opponent. Uh, this is a red card and serious foul play. Okay. Anybody else have anything different, different thoughts? Agree, disagree? Hey, Matt, this is Brian. Um, so looking at the tackle here, I don't know that I would agree that the cleat is making contact with the calf. Um, it looks like it might be the side of her foot um just the also with the way that the white player falls she kind of stumbles forward she's not her if it was higher up on the leg i think i would expect her leg to swing out a little more um so i think i might go with a, a caution here just because i think based off the, the way the player is falling 
the, the foot's not swinging out. It looks like it's a much lower contact um, on her leg. Okay. Anybody else want to add to that or, or disagree? Additional thoughts? Matt, I just want to add a thought in relation to what uh, Brian was saying that, you know, this can't always be a mitigating factor, especially if the force is already high enough. But what could be fortunate for the defender or the orange player in this case is that um, the contact doesn't come to the standing leg of the opponent. So, you know, if this contact is on a planted foot, then um, the consequences are going to be much higher for the opponent. Uh, I, I think this is a highly inflammatory tackle, much like the first one that we saw. Um, but perhaps the orange player is, is lucky enough that the contact isn't, you know, with a foot that's planted. It's with the foot that's uh, off the ground. Sure. So I... The, anybody else want to add anything to that? Yeah, I, I I had to watch this about 15 times just now over that last little bit there. And you can clearly see the black cleat on the white sock and the foot turn when it makes contact with that right calf. Like the, she definitely got her in the calf. So this is a difficult clip. And I did, uh, I did Tehran a disservice here by freezing it at a place that made it look like the contact happened bottom of foot to calf. That freeze frame right there is a disservice to this tackle. So if you go back and, and look at it in a little bit better camera angle or with better um, – um, a higher resolution camera, the contact – actually, she misses her with the boot and instead – the contact happens back of right calf to back of right calf. So the cleat itself doesn't make the contact. So the analysis of the player's reaction is, I think, a solid one. If, if that tackle with that speed and that force had been made bottom of boot to the side of the leg or the back of the calf, I think the player's reaction would have been significantly more violent than it was. I think the player really would have would – have you know, almost broken in half or tumbled or tucked or something underneath the weight of that kind of a challenge. So this one, the assessor on this game, and it was upheld, this is a yellow card, but only because the bottom of the studs actually misses the player, goes over the top, and the contact happens with the bottom of the right calf of the defender to the right calf of the attacker. So this freeze frame here, with a bad camera resolution makes it look like the bottom of the studs goes directly into the leg. That's actually not what happens here. The player goes on past. We'll watch this one here in regular time. You can see it goes on through, past, and you'll see the player's leg here bends down at the knee. That comes from the pressure of the leg on top of her and goes down. If that player had come through with that amount of force in this direction, this player's body would have also moved in that direction, not continued that way. So that's a factor I think we need to look at here. So difficult clip. End of the day, referee goes yellow card. That's an accurate decision. But based on the position of the referee, this is a hard decision to get right because you're not looking at the right angle to see the mode of contact here. And frankly, the assistant referee probably can't be that much help either. But if we freeze frame here in the replay, you can see here, this is actually the moment of contact. And it's the back of the right calf to the back of the right calf. And the studs go on through, making minimal contact, if any. So we have a yellow card for this challenge. Tough one, though, here, yeah? Any questions on that? Any disagreement still? Okay. Whoever's watching the next video, go ahead and mute yourself so we're not listening to the announcer. Jose or Corey, one of the two of you. We'll move on to the next one. Who wants to take the fourth clip? Hey, man, this is Kevin Pham. I'll go ahead and take that one. All right, Kevin. Here we go.
Yeah, so... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry. Wait for the replay. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, what do you got for us? Yeah, so <coughs> in this video, you have um, the player in black. Well, it's kind of a, a loose ball there, but... The white player is coming in to the player which, to get the ball with a fair, with a fair challenge, but then you have the uh, the black player just coming in, lunging at the uh, at the ball, leaving both feet. Um, both the studs are in the air. Um, the uh, the black player is not really having any consideration for the safety of the opponent, and the leading foot. Has uh, st both st has a stud up, making contact with the um, soft spot of the opponent's foot, but at the ankles, um, which is requiring the medic team to come onto the field to attend to a possible injury. And um, I would give a a red card for uh, serious foul play. And I think the amount, and also another thing to consider is the uh, the amount of force. I think it's excessive um, with the amount of force that the players coming in and making contact with the player's ankle. So I have a red card uh, for serious foul play. All right. Would anybody but Mr. Rivas like to comment or add anything different to this clip? Okay. Then let's take a look at the moment of truth here. As we've talked about before, oops, thank you for the text, Conrad. Are you, uh, give me just a second here. Conrad joined us late. I'm going to unmute. Go ahead, Conrad. Thank you. Uh, he also makes contact with the planting foot, unlike the video beforehand. So as the guy's planting foot, that makes it a big difference too. Fair enough. Okay. Anybody else want to add anything else? All right. I'm just going to go through and unmute a couple more people here while I'm doing this. All right. So, the moment of truth on this tackle, you'll see the player actually comes through his feet to the ground first. He actually wins the ball right here. So, this is the video that, or the, the consideration we talked about. Does the player make fair or unfair contact with the opponent after the ball has been played? So, here he actually wins the ball. First thing he does is, is get the ball away. But then as he follows through, both of his feet come up into the air. The left foot comes up high into the right calf, and the right foot continues into the ankle, bottom of the studs, straight leg. So even though he's won the ball here first, his follow-through is definitely endangering the safety of the opponent. He actually makes contact somehow with both legs, with both feet, which is a feat that's hard to accomplish. Um... But he makes contact with the inside of the right calf here with the left stud and then plants the right stud into the ankle here, which makes the referee's decision here an accurate one. Now, as far as technique for sending the, this player off, this is something we all want to learn from. Tackle happens. Immediately assess the players around. White player comes in to see what's going on, but you'll notice the referee is already reaching for his back pocket. By holding on to his back pocket, he's letting everybody know he's going to send this player off. But he's making sure that we get attention, medical attention, onto the field first. And you'll see red card comes out, everybody backs off, no problem. So this is well managed in a tackle Early in the game, that could have been a lot more challenging and a lot more difficult for all parties involved by the referee's positioning when the challenge happens. You can't ask for a better position than that to see everything. And then a quick decision right there to reach to the back pocket. Everybody knows he's going to send them off. They start to react. They realize his hand's in the back pocket. And they stop and they check. Everything's fine. So well handled here by the referee. Accurate decision. Any questions? Hi. 
Uh, yeah, I have a question, Victor. This is Victor, the yes. other Victor. <coughs> Hi, um, could Victor have done anything to prevent this? Because he was looking at this tackle coming, and I knew he saw that tackle coming. Again, I don't know, at this level, at the USL level, and also the high level, do you try to help the players in this kind of situation, kind of diffuse that, seeing that it's likely going to happen based on his position? Mr. Rivas, would you like to chime in on this? How do I do that? <laughs> Is there anything we could have done to prevent this player from committing this kind of a tackle? Once Pascal Abusi had jumped, he has he's out of control. If I say anything, it's not a help to anyone because he in this moment here is airborne. And if I if I say no, don't do it, it's too late. So the decision for him to tackle this way was made seconds before. As soon as the ball was in flight and it was clear it was a 50-50, there's nothing you can do except make the right decision at the moment the point of contact. Yeah, I, I don't think there's really much to add to that. I mean, it's early in the game, so there probably haven't been a lot of opportunities in the match for Victor to show everybody what's acceptable and what's not. And frankly, this tackle kind of comes out of nowhere because this tackle even, you know, he's yeah, he's, he's lost control here, but if he's a little bit smarter about how he commits this tackle, then it's just a normal slide tackle. So there's really no way for Victor to know until he's into the tackle that he's going to be an idiot about this tackle. Because uh, really, it's the follow-through that gets him. If he, if he had just tucked his feet to the side and slid, everything would have been fine. So even the moment that he's airborne, if he tucks his legs back and doesn't make the secondary contact with the player, we don't have a sending off here, more than likely. We have a, we have a cautionable offense for committing a reckless challenge, but it's the follow-through. It's the straightening out the legs and making sure that he makes contact with the opponent that gets him sent off. So at the professional level... Unless you can sense something building from a long ways away, which didn't happen here, there's really not a lot you can do to prevent this, particularly this early in the game. Now, if he's less successful with this tackle in, in making the kind of contact, then you can chew him out. You can you know, make a very, very forceful display to let everybody know those kind of tackles aren't acceptable. But in fair, you know, unfortunately, he, he goes for it all here and he gets it. So there's really not anything you can do to prevent here. Any other Thanks. questions? Uh, it's it, it's worth noting too that this player um, he had been sent off at least once before this, this tackle for an identical tackle, if not twice. I know he had three during the course of the season. Um, so maybe preventing it, like Victor asked, isn't a possibility. But certainly understanding and having the knowledge to better make that decision is in your ability and it's just doing your homework before the match and knowing your personnel that you have on the field. Absolutely. That's crucial information to know. All right. Anything else on this clip? All right. Then let's go ahead and move on. Clip number five. Anybody want to take this one? Victor, do you mind muting yourself? Who wants to take this one? Let's go, volunteers. I'll take it. All right. Conrad. Conrad. All right. Thank you, sir. Here we go. All right. We're going to skip ahead and look at the replay. What do we got? Uh, I have a yellow card. The face to place that it's like tackling in. She is coming to a reckless challenge. The blue player has no chance to get out of the way. Um, sorry, the orange player has no chance to get out of the way. Um, and she gives a little extra ride at the end. She puts both feet together and kind of pushes through the, the, the foot three off the ground. Okay. So what considerations are we making here then to say that this is a yellow card? Uh, you have your cleats exposed from a blue player coming in into uh, the soft part of the foot of the orange player number two there. 
So by that analysis, then we have a red card, right? Because if the hard contact with the bottom of the studs has hit the soft part of the leg, then that's a little bit different than the hard part of the foot, right? Correct. But I have that foot coming up off the ground. She saw her coming. She had enough time to react. Number two, I had enough time to react to get that foot out of the way to avoid it being fully planted. That's my opinion. Okay. Anybody want to add anything to that? Disagree? Anybody? I think we have to be careful with when we say that we, although she is trying to get out of the way, we can't bail out the blue player at the same time because of the challenge that she's making. Okay. So in, in, I don't know if that's a way of disagreeing or if that's a way of just adding um, more information. kind of adding to it. Right. Yeah. But we have to be careful with not making sure that we're saying that the orange players, blue players trying to get out of the way. Cause from the freeze frame that you have, she's going through the player and it's uh, her leg starts down on the leg <clears throat> at the ankle and it goes, uh, it rises up as the player tries to move her foot out of the way. So, um, I think it's red card for um, a clear disregard for the player's safety in that her lay, her the hard her the bottom of her studs are going through the top of her ankle. Okay. Anybody else want to have anything different to that or add anything else? Hey Matt, this is Kevin Pham. Okay. Um, one of the things I wanted to note is um, I think the blue defender um, definitely makes contact with the the player. Um, really close to the top of the foot, but it is also very close to the ankle. But I think what's more important is worth noting is that the defender actually pulls her leg back upon making contact. And I think the amount of force isn't too excessive. Um, so I think red might be a little bit too harsh. And I think the yellow card was a good call on this one. Anybody else want to add anything to that? Yeah, to me, that's a send off. It's lucky that the orange player was able to move the foot and didn't get stuck in the turf. Um, I think this is has also, uh, I don't think it's been mentioned, but it has a lot of speed. And luckily she doesn't uh, keep her legs straight. And that's probably why the orange player uh, is able to get the foot out. But it just seems to me like it's clearly endangering the safety of that player. All right, other thoughts? Hey Matt, it's Harris. Um, I I thought the the tackle, um, or at least the the sweeping motion of the tackle, was avoidable for for the player. Um, I agree with Kevin that um, it seems the uh, the attacking player in orange kind of pulled her foot up um, slightly enough to like basically, um, I mean, keep herself safe from the damage of this tackle. Um, and overall, it seemed like the speed uh, that I think from this tackle is a little more sweeping rather than straight through that that's kind of what i thought i saw okay any other final thoughts from anybody okay so this is where we have to be careful not to let a single moment in time inform our decision if we looked at just this what would we think that seems right. like a red card right if the player has jumped in and landed like that we're going to send this player off, right? Because more than likely they're coming in with a lot of force. But that's not really what happened here. So if we come back and we look at the clip back here, we see that she actually runs directly towards the ball and makes, as Harris describes, a sweeping tackle into the ball. So she's on the ground at this point. The opposing player is a yard away. So at this moment, this is a clean tackle, right? If you saw this freeze frame, would you think there's anything wrong at all with this challenge? Probably not. The problem, of course, comes with the follow through. And again, it's where we look at the replay. We begin to analyze what this looks like. Sweep so through the ball first. And then there's a little bit of extra contact as the player moves the foot out. So the answer to this one, as requested by Pro for the referee here, is that this is an accurate yellow card. 
for the reason being that the initial point of the force wasn't into the player. And this angle is deceiving because it looks like she's going right in. She's going towards the touch line, not towards the player. She kicks the ball away, follows through, and hits the top of the foot. Player back pulls the leg out. Most of the contact happens to the hard surface on the top of the foot. So watching this challenge, again in full motion, you'll see the player go at the ball first and follow through a little bit, but with not a lot of force and absolutely a reckless challenge. So we have a yellow card here. But I do want you to look at, her name is Chapman, and her reaction to this, because we're going to see a video clip of her a little bit later. She's a known player in the NWSL. We'll leave it like that. Who wants to take number six? I got it. <clears throat> this is Corey. All right, Corey. Give us a fresh start at that one. Watch the whole thing, and then I'll fast forward to the replay. What do we got? Okay, so we have the, the Phoenix defender who comes in and, and first first gets the ball, and that's why you see it fly away. But he comes in with such speed that it carries it through, and <clears throat> he then takes out the, the Orange County attacker. Um, so here we have less of a, a point of contact problem, like studs on a soft area and more just a – approaching a tackle in a in a reckless manner in, in terms of the speed at which he's coming in. So you see the, the left foot first hits the the kind of left foot of the, the black attacker, and then he kind of sweeps all the way through him. So I have a foul and yellow card. Anybody want to add anything to that? Disagree? Change anything? Thoughts? Everybody thinks that's right? Okay. Hey, Matt, this is Kevin. Oh. Go ahead, Kevin. Sorry, Matt. Yeah, this is Kevin Pham. Um, actually, looking at this, I think um, the, the defendant player in white seems like they're challenging for the ball, but I don't, I don't think they're really considering – I don't think they're going for it with a fair challenge. Um, I don't think he really cares if he gets the ball or not. It seems like the amount of force that he's using um, to go in for the challenge is just – he's just going through the player. And it's, it looks almost that it's with excessive force, um, even though he's not using his studs to um, to make contact with the player. I think the amount of force that he's going through the player is is excessive. So I I think that'd be a good argument for possibly a red card for serious foul play. And um, I believe that the player actually had to be attended to with the by the medical staff. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Do you want to add anything to that? Change anything from that? Let's see. I think I would add in that picture right there that the foot gets trapped, and so the ankle is actually in not in a in a angle. Um, and if it would have stayed there, then I think you have a broken ankle or a broken leg. Um, luckily, I think it just pops out. And I think um, also I was watching this game. It, th that player later had to be subbed out. He couldn't continue. So I. I'm leaning with Kevin on this one, um, just based on the the intensity, and it it almost seems uh, um, like a scissor kick at the very last instant, and maybe that's why the foot gets trapped. Give me just a second here. Jordan wants to say something, but Jordan, if you can hear me, you are you you muted yourself. There you go. Okay. What do you so, got? Uh, the way he was coming in. After he made contact with the ball, you could see the back foot of the white defender player sweeping his back foot into the player. Now, to me, that that just seems serious foul play to me. Okay. Anybody else want to add anything? So what did we talk about and what did we look at 
in the FIFA materials? What was consistent on all of the red cards? The, the ankle. Player. You can have control of your body. It was leading with studs. So in this challenge, the player comes in, definitely lines him up, sees he's got a meaty opportunity to lay a pretty hefty challenge, and there's no doubt about that. But he comes in with his legs tucked back. Wins the ball, follows through with his legs tucked back. So... In reviewing the considerations, does the player show a lack of attention or consideration? Absolutely. Does the player act without precaution? No. He actually acts with precaution because he tucks his feet back, right? If he had been acting without precaution, he would have led with those studs. Does the player make fair or unfair contact with the opponent after touching the ball? Definitely unfair contact. No problems there. Is the challenge putting an opponent in a dangerous situation? Maybe, maybe not. Hard to know. Does the player far exceed the necessary use of force? Far exceed. For people who have refereed the game at this level, this is not far exceeding the amount of force that could be used. Does the player use brutality? No. The challenge clearly endangering the safety of the opponent? No, it's not clear. What degree of speed or intensity? It's pretty high, but it's not the highest anybody's ever seen. Is the player lunging? What part of the body has the player used to make contact? It's the legs. It's not the studs. And is the player challenging for the ball at the moment the contact is made? Yes. And on which part of the opponent's body is contact made? It actually happens on the feet and on the legs. So you have a leg-to-leg -leg challenge here. Feet are tucked back. Where players can do the most damage is when they come in with that kind of speed but go completely off the ground, lock their legs, and drive through the player with the bottom of their studs, none of which this player has done. So for those reasons, we want a yellow card here. Yellow card is the accurate decision here. And again, when we look at the replay... <coughs> Goes to ball first, tucks the left leg back. Both legs are tucked back here. It's really hard to do a lot of damage unless you scissor the opponent. It's really hard to do damage to a player here in this situation. Player sweeps out from under him. That's a yellow card offense. Questions or disagreements with that? Victor Rivas, you want to add anything to this? You saw these teams a lot. Um, I think the the distance from from the um, it's difficult to describe this. The distance that the white player decides to tackle the ball is extremely relevant at this level. Mm -hmm. That for this to be serious foul play, the defender in white would have to come from a further distance to initiate and commit that tackle you see that it's very nearby it's only half a meter away from the opponent it's immediately on the ball so the force that's generated from this tackle is 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 much less than the tackle that was generated the force that was generated in the previous tackle with pascal abusi where he leaves his feet far from the ball he's two meters from the ball he's three meters from, the, from his opponent and i think that at this level you have to recognize where the defenders are coming from and how far they're willing to commit these tackles. In this case, this is this is a great yellow card. Um, it's not it's not serious foul play. There's no there's no force to really endanger number ten. Um, we're getting drawn in on the bent leg, but I think this is clearly a yellow. And so that's a factor to think about. How far from the challenge does the player leave his feet? Because that's also going to have a factor in how reasonable is it that the player was trying to play the ball. Here, as Victor said, he's a half a meter away, which means he's narrowed down, the ball is clearly identifiable, and he's gone in to make a play for the ball, albeit with some force. Had he left his feet three yards away or three yards farther, then we're looking at a different situation. Because then to close that distance, he's got to leave his feet and get into the air, which means now he's out of control. Whereas here, if you see as we go through slowly, he actually goes to ground. 
he's on the ground here. His body has never actually left the ground, which is an important thing to look for. And we'll see a video later on that shows the opposite of that. So good point there, Victor. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Who wants to take on number seven? Do it, Danny Sponges. All right, Danny, here we go. Okay, my video is skipping, but I think I saw this. Can you watch it on YouTube or no? Uh, they would have to kick me out of the webinar. But, yeah, so I, I saw that several times. I, I saw the outcome. He gives a red card. So I think it, it, from what I see, it looks like there was some discussion just before the video started. And he, he looked like he was already irritated at something. He was kind of looking around. And it looked like he was looking to kick the first guy that he saw. So, I mean, as, as a referee, and I know we're going through considerations and stuff, but as a referee, I'm looking for those cues to see if he's going to lunge, if he's going to retaliate, if he's going to initiate some kind of dirty contact. And I think the referee was – he knew what was going to happen at that moment. So, I, I mean, he jumps with excessive force. Um, he comes from a far distance. His leg is straight. Um, hard part. I mean, the bottom of the foot. It's it's all there for for uh, serious foul play. <laughs> okay, give me just a second here. That's the moment. I'm actually just before it. So as we spoke a few minutes ago with Victor. Compare the distance, this player here is leaving his feet. Look how far away he is. He's a good three yards away from the player. Yeah. And it's almost like he jumps up and then in rather than for the, you know, the ball. So this right here for everybody watching is a warning sign. If a player ever completely leaves his feet in this manner – it means he's in completely, or he's completely out of control of his body. There's literally no way he can control himself at this moment. And then, as it gets close, he straightens the leg, and that's the moment of truth. So, am I am I off the hook, Matt? You a solid decision here, Danny. Well done. Thank you. So, again, things to look for. The lunge, the straight, the leg through the player, and the immediate reaction knowing you did something wrong. And as the speaker on this match pointed out, and Danny, you're accurate on this one as well, he's in the middle of some confrontation right here. Immediately turns around the next time he gets close, commits this challenge. And then yeah, he was then here, he actually tries to headbutt a couple of players. Tries to bite an ear, too, I think. So, <laughs> behaviors like this from a player need to be warning signs that perhaps he's not all there at that moment in time and you need to watch him because then he might commit a challenge like this. Thanks, Matt. Is there anybody looking in serious foul play? Because he has the potential to really hurt all right who wants to take number eight sorry matt can i ask a question regarding number seven before we move on yeah go ahead um do you have recommendations for technique in that case because obviously the red card comes out quickly the referee makes his decision easily but um you know compared to the clip with uh, victor in colorado uh, the behavior of the player who committed the foul is is far more hostile and aggressive, and you have players really in each other's faces. So I, I think normally you want to try to discourage that and get the player off as quickly as possible, but do you think there's a chance for the referee to get involved, or is it too, too, um, too volatile at this point? You know, there's a couple of answers to that question, and a lot of it depends on what happened, you know, well before this. Um, we don't get a good sense of where this is in the game because the video doesn't tell us where it is, but my guess would be we're, we're a bit into the match 
I would guess we're probably in the 60s or 70s somewhere, just based on kind of the attitudes of everybody. So in Victor's situation, the clip we looked at where he was able to delay the red card, it's because it was very early in the game. There wasn't a whole lot of game tension built up where we needed to defuse the situation immediately. And the reaction of the players around you can guide you in your response to this. So with Victor sending off, nobody around him really ran to the situation, got really upset or anything like that. So you're okay to take your time. You're okay to check. You're okay to be calm. In this situation, obviously this player has just been involved in some sort of confrontation, immediately comes back and makes this challenge. And there's three or four of the players around. The reactions are severe and quick. You see a player runs in here. This player's run in. It's important to let everybody know you're going to deal with this situation. There's another technique that you can use here. And depending on, again, the stability of the player, the referee walks past it here and leaves three players going at this guy. There is a way by putting himself between these players without actually touching the player who's caused the problem here he can use his body to keep the two players apart from one another. So if we were going to add anything to this, I would say walking to get in between so this kind of contact doesn't happen. Because while nothing really escalates out of it, he tries to headbutt here. He tries again. He tries to bite his ear. Now you have 3v1. This could have gone into something significantly more serious had – the opponent's team come in and tried to defend this guy a little bit. So the referee in this moment could have walked into the space right here between these players and tried to keep the other players away from him. I personally, given the instability of this of the player who was sent off, I would not have gone and tried to touch him or tried to move him out of that scenario because he's volatile at that moment. I would have clearly sent him off and – Focus your energy on the other players in white jerseys who are coming in and trying to get into the face of the player. That could have potentially helped. Again, this situation resolves itself, but you could have done a little bit more in this moment to make sure it didn't go anywhere else. But it's important to be constantly measuring the reactions of the people around you and what their, their actions are at any given moment. I would never suggest to anybody that they go and try to interact with the player being sent off right now because he's the one who's being really volatile. There are other times where you can grab the player who's a problem, and we'll look at this, in a, and we're going to do, I think, in early March, right before the NPSL season starts, we're going to do a, a webinar on mass confrontations. And you'll see some clips where the, the referee actually grabs a hold of the player who caused the problem and physically removes them from the situation. That's okay to do. If they are calm, this player right now is not calm. So I would never suggest that somebody go and grab a hold of him or try to move him away from potential danger. Instead, focus your energy on the players who you know aren't going to be antagonistic towards you in this situation. Does that answer the question? Yeah, thank you. I do think a quick red card is a good thing here, though, given the volatility and potential for, for problems in this situation. All right, who is going to take number eight? <coughs> Somebody had volunteered. Who was going to do it? Matt, I'll take it. All right, here we go. The return of Miss Chapman. Yeah, and it's ugly. Let's watch it one more time. And then we'll give a freeze frame. All right. Um, yeah. So Chapman is uh, uh, definitely lunging at her opponent from the front uh, with her leg locked, and she is making contact with <laughs> the um, with the ankle or high on top of the foot, ankle, lower part of the leg, um, and her leg is completely straight. So she is definitely um endangering the safety of the the player uh, or she's actually act, acting in complete disregard um another tip that you can see is that she's running from i think she came from about midway through that mid circle just on the other side so she's coming from about 10 about 10 yards maybe a little bit more 
<clears throat> so there's definitely um, excessive force in the amount of speed that she's carrying along with her locked leg. All right. Anybody want to add anything to that? Did I say uh, a misconduct? You didn't, but I think we all assumed based on your okay. endangering the safety of. Yeah, endangering the safety, uh, completely disregard, and so this would be a uh, red card offense. Okay, anybody want to add anything to that or disagree with that? All right, so some warning signs here. And again, talking about uh, what Victor talked about, how far away from the ball has the player made the decision to go to ground here? You can tell she's going to tackle here. And the ball is rolling towards an opponent, and she's going to go to ground, which means she has no ability to really determine where the ball is going to be when she gets there. So when a player right here at this moment, she's completely out of control of her body. Even though a foot's on the ground, she's in complete uh, lack of control of her body at this moment in time. And she has no idea where the ball is going to end up, which is why she ends up going over the top of the ball or getting there well in advance of the ball. And then the key here, leg is locked. Stead's going actually up just below the knee. It was pretty, pretty nasty. Um, and makes complete contact. Doesn't actually ever touch the ball. You can see right here, bends the leg. Clear, easy red card. And this is where knowing her habits and watching game film and knowing that she commits a lot of crazy tackles like the one we saw a few minutes ago helps you to understand that she may be a problem. Referee immediately comes in forcefully with a red card. Questions on that? Okay. Then we go on to number nine. Who wants to take this one? Last volunteer and we're out of here. Who wants to take it? My reputation for putting the hardest video at the end apparently is making nobody want to volunteer. I'm going to choose somebody. All right, I'll take it, Matt. It's Harris. Thank you, Harris. Okay, here we go. So we're going to fast forward and have a look at the replay. I think. Oh, no, there's no. I don't think there is one. All right, so let's watch it again then. All right, what do we got? Oof, okay, so um, I didn't catch the number of uh, the orange bear as it comes in. I think it's 13, I could be wrong. Um, the player committing the, the green player just keeps... Right, so uh, the green player just keeps the ball in play and uh, oof, he jumps, lunges in with intensity, um, studs showing. I didn't quite catch the, uh, the contact point. Um, if it was a graze, if he got him on the, on the foot just as it plants. Um, something semi-interesting as a side note is that uh, how the green defender reacts. He just kind of steps up and kind of walks walks past it or trusts that the referee will handle it or kind of shakes it off. Um, and it's everyone else that's kind of uh, up, in, up in flames and obviously the mass confrontation that ensues. Um, just trying to look here at uh, possible considerations. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's an actual good freeze frame or angle on uh, how the contact is made. Um, even though he does go in lunging with studs. Because I'm looking a freeze frame, maybe a, or maybe like 
another 50 milliseconds after that and it almost looks like uh it, it skids past but uh This is kind of a tough one. I think I think I do agree with caution. I don't think he went. Um, he made solid contact through. It was it was it was a strong uh, drive by tackle. Um, definitely made definitely made some uh, meaningful contact. Um, so I think I agree with the referee here with reckless. Um, although I'm not a fan of obviously the 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 nature of the contact and the way he went in. Okay, so we have yellow card. Anybody have anything different than that? Disagree? Want to add more to that? <clears throat> Everybody's comfortable with the yellow card here, or is nobody just? I think, his, his foot was, I think that I, I think that could be that, but I think the 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 contact was made with his foot. It's up in the air, um, so there is some sort of um, I guess safety factor that he can like pull out, and it's not as damaging as a planted foot. Okay. So if no one else wants to jump in on this, I'll give you one last chance. I'll jump yeah. in. Go okay. ahead. Yeah. I, that, that, that player is making no attempt to get to that ball whatsoever. The ball's a free ball. They're both uh, too far apart to make a challenge on it. He's just going there to hurt the guy. There's, it's, it's beyond reckless. It, there's too much force behind that. He, he's, already, he's already lunging for that with the cleats exposed. And he gets them in the in the other foot as well with the with the with the uh, the foot behind him, so he gets in the planting foot as he gets past the ball. Okay. Can I add something with that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, that's a attacker against a defender, and they've probably been playing the last sixty six minutes against each other. So okay. I think that adds a bunch to that whole formula. Okay. There's another thing I'd like to add. Um, the attacker swings, so if you look at the moment you've paused, his trailing leg is behind him, but then he brings it forward. And I think that's the foot that actually makes contact with uh, the opponent's ankle. Anybody else want to add anything? Yeah, Matt, I just want to make sure we point out specifically that the biggest clue here, in addition to, you know, both feet being off the ground, studs being exposed, is the speed of this tackle. And the player in orange is at a full sprint when he leaves his feet, and he's had, you know, five to ten yards of, of buildup to get to that point. So when we talk about not being in control of your body, he's well into that range. Okay. Anybody else have anything else to add? Yeah, Matt, just one last thing I wanted to say was um, I think it's also worth noting that the green player, the way that he's standing, he um, he's in a position where it causes the case where the orange player is leaping in from the side. So I think the positioning of where the orange player is sliding in is definitely causing a big case for engaging the safety of that player. So that would be definitely a consideration for the factor. Okay. So as always, I put the most difficult clip at the end. Uh, I will change that up next time, so don't plan on that. Um, this is a yellow card from Pro Assessors. This is a yellow card from the very top Pro Assessors. The reason being that, yes, there's a lot of speed in this tackle, but there are a couple of freeze frames we want to look at to give you the hint. The first one is this one. Where are his feet? They're on the ground. He's actually tucked his cleats back after making contact with the ball so he doesn't lead through the player with his cleats. And his feet are on the ground. We back it up just a second here, or a millisecond, I would guess. You can see at this moment in time, his feet are on the ground. The foot that's leading is on the ground through the ball. wins the ball, and goes through with force. But the nature of this challenge is important. Because he stayed on the ground, 
when making this challenge. And because he's not raised his leg up at all in making this challenge, any contact that happens with the player is actually just on the top of the foot or the shoe, the side of the shoe. He doesn't come in contact with the ankle. He doesn't come in contact with higher up on the leg. And so while there's a lot of speed in that tackle, he hasn't come in with any brutality. He hasn't far exceeded the necessary use, although it's a very, very, very speedy challenge. And he hasn't made contact with a player with a with the part of the player's body where there's going to be any harm done here. And so while yes, it's a very hard challenge and it's not a challenge we want to accept in the game, the elements that we need to have there for sending off aren't there. And at this level, while this may seem like a lot to swallow, the reaction of the player actually gives us a hint that the tackle wasn't as bad as you thought. Because he immediately gets up and is saying, calm down, calm down, calm down. Referee comes in, hard, forceful yellow card, lets everybody know that's not okay. So the tackle itself, for the factors that we've gone through and we've talked about tonight, is a caution. Your Harris, your initial analysis is accurate. The next thing to talk about here is how to deal with everything else that happens. At this level, because the orange player has got up and walked away, he's not contested the yellow card. He knew it. He was sending a message. He knew it. He walked away, and everybody else came at him. This is a moment where having a higher level of awareness to your surroundings, when the referee comes in here, he's got tunnel vision, right? He needs to know that this is going to be an inflammatory tackle. He needs to have his head on a swivel and be aware that people are coming in. This is a moment in time where it's appropriate to grab a hold of the player right here and steer him away from everybody else. At this level, we touch players. We grab players if we need to. Grabbing this player and moving him away from everybody else means that all these other players who come running in are going to have to go through you to get to him, and they're not going to do that. So if you put your body earlier between these players and you grab a hold and actually wrap your arms around this orange player and move him away, the players, the green players, the Portland players aren't going to come through you to get to him because they're not coming in swinging. They're coming in to make it, make it known that they're unhappy with that. If you get your body in there earlier, none of this happens. So you can prevent a mass confrontation here by grabbing a hold of the player, moving him away from problems, getting everybody away, show the yellow card, and move on. Okay? Questions on that? I'll take that as a no. All right. That's all of our video work for tonight. Do we have any other general questions having looked at all these clips? Anybody? All right. Then thank you for your attention this evening. Thank you for the work and the analysis. And uh, good luck for everybody working Academy Games this weekend. Make it a good one. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. All right. Good night, everybody. All right. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. <coughs> you want me to punch?